Pastor Goodman, largely catechized life. Okay, new commandment, six, you shall not commit adultery. Now before we run wild with this one too, we recognize where it falls in terms of the second table of the law. Love your neighbor as yourself. This along with four through 10 are all given for the same purpose. Luther writes, they are all to the effect that we will be careful to avoid doing any kind of injury to our neighbor. Okay, so usually when we talk about the sixth commandment, we really only have a big long grocery list of things that you're not supposed to do. Really uncomfortable topics like premarital sex and um, divorce, homosexuality, unfaithfulness, pornography, a whole long list of things that we know that you don't really want to talk to us about because of how sensitive they are. But the thing is, um, well, God calls them sins for a reason. Um, it's because sin breaks stuff. You can see it in the whole second table of the law. Is it better or worse when everybody's killing each other? Do things go better or worse when everybody's stealing? Do things go better or worse when everybody's gossiping? It's true here too. And sometimes you can see it like in a really messy divorce. Sin breaks stuff. And sometimes we have either closed our eyes or reasoned away all the ways that sin really does hurt. But whether you connect the dots unintentionally or intentionally, whether you miss the point unintentionally or intentionally, yeah, sin breaks stuff. But the thing is, if you only want to work the commandments by the negatives, all the things that you should not do, you'll miss the whole point in the first place. And in our desire to keep you from all of these dangerous things, sometimes we paint such a negative list of the Sixth Commandment that we forget to talk about why it actually matters in the first place. You see, the Sixth Commandment, just like all the rest, they were given in love. God gave the law in love. Love shaped all Ten Commandments. This is not just a desire to see some people called sinners and punished. This is actually not even just a desire to make us feel guilty all the time. This is a gift because, well, things actually go better when we live according to the law. The law is never supposed to be just a time to make you feel awful about yourself. It will do that because we're sinners, but, well, life goes easier when we follow it. If you actually want to see it spoken about positively, though, Luther does a really good job in the first commandment and actually in the sixth commandment. Of all the commandments he gives us in the small catechism, those two commandments alone are spoken about only in terms of the positive. The first commandment, you shall have no other gods, means that we should fear, love, and trust in God above all things. No negatives, only positives. And the six, you shall not commit adultery. It means that we should fear and love God, that we lead a sexually pure and decent life in what we say and do, and husband and wife love and honor each other. Again, no grocery list. It's actually only spoken about in the positive. And so if you've got a bad habit of only treating the Sixth Commandment in terms of lists of things that people shouldn't do, stop for a minute and ask yourself why Luther only saw fit to talk about it in terms of the positive. It's not that those things that we listed before aren't sins. They are. They do hurt. But, well, the thing is, there's something better. Luther writes, he gives us this commandment to show how gloriously God honors and extols this estate inasmuch as by his commandment he both sanctions and guards it. See, if the only thing we've ever taught you in the Sixth Commandment is a big long list of things not to do, we have messed up. This is actually more than that, about an estate that is worth praising and even defending. This is about why marriage is good. This is about why chastity is beautiful. Chastity is not just an absence of immorality. Virtue is not just an absence of vice. It's about love, and that has a substance and a form. It is love that took flesh to save you on the cross, and the cross is not just an absence of Jesus doing bad things. It's a sacrifice that took place in time. It, it, it's beautiful. The God who loves you so much that he would forgive you all your sins, even the Six Commandment sins, well, he has it in mind to give you a measure of this love here on earth, a demonstration of all of that love, a best friend, a soulmate, a spouse. And in the Sixth Commandment, sometimes we see the damage done in it and we just get so afraid. We get so desperate to make you connect the dots that we yell about all the things that you shouldn't do. And in doing so, we forget to talk about why marriage is worth defending in the first place. Remember that, well, the God loves you. Remember that God actually has in mind marriage as a good thing, something worth defending and protecting. And that's because he wants to see you taken care of. 
in the same way that he insists on being your God in the first commandment because he just he loves you so much he really wants to see you saved in the same way in the sixth commandment he demands that you live a chaste life because well he wants you to have a measure of that joy and that love here on earth he wants you to see just how beautiful it can be and all of this he gives to you in this way marriage is a good thing chastity is a beautiful thing and when it comes to the sixth commandment we really have to talk about it that way higher things thanks you for your support please continue to support the work we do with youth by going to our website at higherthings.org clicking on support and donating securely through paypal your gift helps us in our mission to support pastors youth workers and parents in daring our church's youth to be lutheran